What's the best witty comeback you've ever witnessed? Back in 10th grade, we had a long-term substitute physics teacher. Younger guy, so the tough guys in class wanted to have a pee-pee measuring contest with him, like, daily. They constantly made fun of him and joked about his wife. One day, I didn't hear the start of it, but one kid said something like, I'll bury my face in your wife's chest. Teacher had obviously had enough and said, No, the only D's you're ever going to see are your grades. The class exploded, nobody ever told on the teacher for saying that, and the guys stopped messing with him. Could a teacher even get in trouble for saying something like that at your school? They certainly wouldn't at mine. They were given wide latitude, especially if provoked. The only case of a teacher getting in trouble for crap was when a math teacher hit a kid for saying something about his, the teacher's, girlfriend. In other words, physical violence could get a teacher in trouble. Words, other than presumably slurs or maybe things that were entirely unprovoked, couldn't. Our geography teacher didn't even use our names, just called us little craps, vermin, emo kid with shampoo deficiency, etc. And we loved her. Sitting in a bar in a country well known for working girls, a guy walks in and starts yelling at a girl, B word, you gave me VD. She looked at him and said, No, I didn't. You bought it. That guy got burned twice. I miss my late uncle. He was the wittiest mother fricker I ever knew. Not a joke teller, just had great one line comebacks that were never mean, just funny. My favorite was when he went out to eat at a diner with his wife and my mum, just the three of them. The waitress said to him, Lucky you, you get to eat with two ladies. My uncle replied, Yeah, but can you hurry it up? I have to get home to my wife. My uncle Bob was in a jewelry store a few years ago to buy a present for his longtime girlfriend. They'd been together for over ten years and had a kid. The manager of the store was helping him as they were fairly busy and she was called away on some managerial task and handed him to another employee, saying, Would you help this man? He's looking for a bracelet for his wife. And my uncle said, Oh no, this is for my girlfriend. I wouldn't spend money like this on my wife. He said the following stunned silence was deafening. He's also pretty deadpan, so they probably thought he was serious. He seems like a funny guy. Could have been the same guy that came into my restaurant and when asked by the hostess how he was, he replied, Well, my wife and girlfriend have left me, so I'm looking for two new girls. I mean, let's hope that that last one was a joke. There's something to be said for being comfortable enough with your relationship to pull these jokes off directly in front of your spouse, like the first guy did. My mum's dad passed away a couple of days previously. The night before the funeral, a dark and stormy night, the funeral home called 9pm to tell my mother she had forgotten a tie for the suit for tomorrow's showing. She freaked out, realising that she would have to drive over to the nursing home to fetch a tie and then drive to the funeral home. Dad, who loved himself his clip-on ties and had many of them, said, Oh, don't go doing that trip on a nice like tonight at this time of night. Just grab one of my clip-on ties and take it with you in the morning. My mum, who actually hated that my dad had never learned to tie a tie, responded without missing a beat, My father would never be caught dead wearing a clip-on tie. Seconds after she realized what she said, she burst into tears. Savaged from beyond the grave. Grandpa. In my day, kids were seen and not heard. Grandson, so are the movies. Was talking to a friend about preferred positions in bed with a partner, and he said, I like being on the bottom because all I do is frick up anyways. Classic self-roast. Not witnessed firsthand, but heard the recounting or legend many times. Growing up, a friend's older brother nearly got kicked out of high school for this exchange. The teacher, teaching about Jewish law around bestiality that's strictly forbidden, looks at a student and says, Does this upset you, David? David says, Yeah, it means I can't do the deed with your wife anymore. He had to graduate late since he wasn't allowed back into that class. When I was training for my current job, our teacher chose to inform us that he and his wife had chosen not to procreate by saying, All my children have four legs and tails. I have no idea where it came from, but I spat out, Holy crap, I'd hate to see what your wife looks like. My class busted out laughing, teacher included. He went a little hard on me the next couple of days, but was a good sport in general. We had a lot of fun in that class, and a big part of that was all the crap slinging. Overly condescending boss looking over my work. Can I ask a stupid question? Me, on my last week at that job, you seem overqualified. You have a lot of options here. Sure, I've seen you do it before. In my experience, yes. It's one of your core competencies. I stole this line from American Beauty and paraphrased it, but when my boss would say, Hey, have you got a second? I'd answer condescendingly, For you, boss, I've got at least 30. He had a good sense of humor and thought it was funny every time. Works for 
Have you got a minute? Two. For you, I've got three. Another good response to, can I ask a stupid question, is, you just did. Do you need to ask another? I had a supervisor who was making fun of a guy's last name. The guy took it and didn't really say anything. When he was done, the supervisor asked him to email him something, and the guy wanted to clarify the spelling of the supervisor's last name, which was Windsor. He said, your name doesn't have D in it, right? The supervisor said no, so the guy said, okay, just oosh-bag then, and then walked away. Overheard. First guy, braggart and jerk, I've got this great new job, I've got over 100 guys under me. Second smartass, what are you, mowing lawns at a cemetery? How many are on top, is what I would have said. Comedian, I remember the first time I did the deed with someone, girl in the audience, yesterday? Audience was laughing. Comedian, I'm glad you remember. Audience, screams. I saw that video too. The text really doesn't properly convey how much the audience laughed at the heckler's joke and how quickly and completely the comedian won the audience back. I was 13 in dance class with some older, catty girls. One of them was picking on me, which ended with her remarking, Bite me. I responded with, I'm trying to cut fat from my diet. Entire team heard it and proceeded to chastise me for being so mean. Served her right, the cow. Jimmy Carr was at another comedian's show and he started laughing. If you've seen him, you'll know how distracting that would be. The guy on stage, can't remember who it was, brutally savaged him with, Jimmy, when I come to see your show, so I don't laugh at your jokes. <laughs> Up until this moment, I've never appreciated how tough Jimmy Carr's strangled chicken of a laugh is to imitate. My apologies to the listeners. I remember some guy talking about this encounter he had in a grocery store. He was behind this woman who was giving the cashier a bunch of crap over something. She was being a real chump, and finally, sick of her attitude, he tells her to lighten up and stop holding up the line. He's getting kinda teed off that she's double-barreling this kid who's done nothing wrong. So she whips around on him and says, This is none of your business. And he responds, Listen, lady, I'm a veterinarian. B-words are my business. Don't know if that story's true. Don't care. I thought it was amazing. Also effective. I'm a gynecologist. C-words are my business. I'm a proctologist. Buttholes are my business. Urologist works too. Members are my business. Guy in grade school was really into war history and building army models. Fighter jets, aircraft, carriers, etc. He was quiet and smart, but handsome and part of the main crowd. Athletic, etc. But very much a history-slash-war buff. At a party, for whatever reason, he was kind of in an argument beef with one of the hotter and more popular girls in class. The greatest comeback I've ever heard was as follows. Girl. Whatever, Dan. Why don't you go play with your model planes? Guy, immediately without missing a beat, Great idea. I can land them on your flat chest. The reaction from the crowd added insult to injury as people went bonkers like it was a walk-off home run in a playoff baseball game. Never have I ever heard a better comeback, real or scripted, ever since. During middle school math class, one of the boys, overweight, was being made fun of by this petite girl. You should put on a bra. You don't need it. You should take off your bra. You don't need it. The class went, oh, and this guy got a few fist bumps. She cried. I've said a similar one. When I was at the beginning of the seventh grade, I didn't have any hair on my legs. This obnoxious girl noticed and said in front of everyone in the class, do you shave your legs? Real loud. I responded, no, and by the looks of it, you don't shave yours either. Her smirk went to an instant frown, and the class went, whoa, like you said, and the teacher laughed. Teacher was real chill. My grandfather died quite a bit before his time, and my grandmother would get a lot of calls for him. One telemarketing firm was particularly pushy, and one day an unbelievably condescending salesperson called and demanded to speak to the man of the household. My grandmother, who was normally restrained to a fault, replied, Well, as soon as he comes back from the dead, I'll have him call you, and slammed down the phone. They actually did stop calling after that. A student told another one he wasn't the sharpest crayon in the box. That one responded with, you're the sharpest because no one wants to work with you. Before you read on, please know that my relationship with my 14-year-old son is built on giving each other a hard time. I said a bad word, don't remember which or why. You're a horrible mother. If I'm so horrible, how did you turn out so awesome? I spent a lot of time with dad. I got wrecked. Son, can't wait to put you in a home. Me, I should have drowned you in the bathtub. He's 21 and a butthole. 
My mum has a wicked sense of humour, and so does my brother. My brother is the middle child. My older sister and I would call my mum at least twice a day each. My brother would rarely call, which hurt her. She started telling him that I guess she failed as a mother and as he doesn't love her. He responded that she could always call him, which has led to at least three years of, to my mother, cold and distant. Cakes, cards, text messages, you name it, from my brother. Had a really witty teacher from my game design class. The vice principal hated him for whatever reason. One day we were all studiously working with our headphones on, programming away while our teacher was up front reading a book. Very available and approachable if we had any suggestions. Then the VP walks into the room. VP, Mr. Teacher, it has come to my attention that you have absolutely no control over your class. This is unacceptable. Teacher gives him a fairly nonchalant stare, coolly and calmly places his book down, and claps his hands loudly three times, which was his very effective way of getting our attention while listening to music. Mind you, the following occurred without us knowing why the VP was there or what he'd said. Teacher. Okay, class, listen up. I've got an exercise for you. This will only take a few minutes. First and foremost, everybody stand up. We all stood up in near unison very quickly. Good. Now all I want you to do is leave the room and stand outside in the hallway, and no matter what this guy says, as he points a finger at the VP, do not come back into the room until I say so. Okay, go. We all exit the room, a little intrigued by what was going on. Okay, VP, bring them back in the classroom. We didn't budge. To this day, that's one of my favorite stories to tell. That's a pretty big flex, to be honest, even if it's not quite in the neighborhood of the quick and snappy comebacks and the rest of the thread. Nice job, though, teacher. When I was in high school, this very large, overweight kid who always picked on me waited till things got quiet in the classroom and said, Dave eats wang. Everyone laughed, and I got embarrassed and nervous. And a few seconds later, after people finished laughing, I stuttered out, "Uh, Yeah, well, you eat everything. I don't know where that came from, but holy crap, the entire room lost it. (laughs) Special Ed Student You're so dumb, you make me look like a genius. I was the instructional aide and had to stop the other kid from trying to fight him, but that burn was so sick it got a chuckle out of me. One of my prouder moments. I was 17 and a 12 or so year old kid came up to me. Hey babe, can I have your number? Why, do you need a babysitter? Not exactly a comeback or insult, but once in biology class we were going over DNA and genetics. We were talking about how traits can be inherited from parents to offspring flowers, and how some could have all the same traits and some could have mixed traits. The packet we used called the same traits flowers purebred, and the other ones mixed. Then a girl in the class asked a question. Have we ever tried to make purebred humans? Teacher. Yeah, some Germans in the 30s and 40s tried to. Really? What happened? World War II, followed by laughter from the rest of the class. I remember reading the possibly apocryphal story of a student being told no excuse would be accepted for not taking a test that was the next day. Some student decided to be funny and said, What about sheer exhaustion from all the climaxes? To which the teacher replied quickly, I guess you'll have to write it with your other hand then. Churchill and some lady were having an argument. Lady. Winston, if you were my husband, I would put arsenic in your morning coffee. Churchill, madam, if you were my wife, I'd drink it. Oh boy, have I got an answer for this one. So I'm sitting in my chemistry class, and there's a dude sitting ahead of me, Jeff. He's just minding his own business when two other dudes behind me, butthead one and butthead two, proceed to start calling his name and ignoring him whenever he turns around. Just trying to annoy him, I suppose. Important to note, Jeff is a pretty intelligent guy, whereas Butthead 1 and Butthead 2 are so inbred they could be a sandwich. After this happens a few times, Jeff finally turns around and drops this line. Hey, Butthead 1, can I borrow one of your extra chromosomes? Overheard two guys in a restroom while at the urinals. Guy 1 tries to embarrass Guy 2. Guy 1, what's with that red ring on your wang? You need to get that checked out. Guy 2, it's just your mom's lipstick from when I saw her last night. Decent comeback, but the real burn is going to come from whatever red ring condition that guy has on his eggplant. The class clown of my classmates, let's call him K, was known for notoriously teeing off teachers with crude, obscene, and insulting jokes. Well, one day, K decided to ask a 30-something-year-old teacher, Miss, ever had a baby? In which the teacher replied with a simple no, but that's not where it ends. K then said to the teacher with a face that only appears on the stupidest of people, Well, I could give you one which caused a few sniggers in class. The corners of the teacher's mouth curled into a smile, and with grace, she walked up to her desk and said, 
No, Kay, I don't want to adopt you, which caused the whole class to erupt into laughter and Kay to shut up for the rest of that year in English. This is still one of the best comebacks I've ever heard, so simple yet so powerful. Oh, you might be able to get away with that in math class. Maybe history. But that kid had no chance against someone who had a far better grasp of the English language than he did. Me and the buddy were at GameStop just browsing and hanging out. Employee comes up to us and asks if we need help finding anything. We told him we were just looking. This was right after the Nintendo DS XL just came out, and he starts trying to sell us on it. Me never having been the handheld gamer type, I told him I wasn't really interested. He decided his ace in the hole would be touting the newer, bigger 4-inch screen. Having enough, I responded, Take it from me, 4 inches isn't that impressive. That was the end of his sales pitch. One time I was at a coffee shop with my good friend and I saw a dime on the floor. Jokingly, I gave it to him and said, There, you can buy yourself a life with this. It kind of sounds funnier in my language. And he quickly answered, I'll just buy yours and give you back the change. I definitely envy people the ability to fire this kind of thing from the hip. I think I could memorize something like this and hold it ready for the right occasion, only to still completely mess it up when the time came. In high school, there was a jerk who was a local star athlete and was pretty much the high school cool athlete bully stereotype. His attempts to pick on people were pretty lame, but people always laughed at them because he was cool, and you always laugh at what the cool kid says. He liked to do the an 80-year-old woman called, she wants her upper back strength back, kind of jokes. He also wanted to go to Cornell on a wrestling scholarship. Not only did he not get the scholarship, he also didn't get accepted to Cornell. One day, when he was in the middle of his so-and-so called routines, I said, Hey, Cornell called. Oh wait, never mind, no they didn't. Actually, I didn't think of that until the next day, and it's one of my life's greatest regrets. The jerk star called, and... Was he a paper salesman named Andy? No, Andy got into Cornell. Douche frat guy walks into a circle of my friends at a party. Frat guy, is this the intellectual circle? My friend, not anymore. Uh, was he just trying to be friendly? With my friend at the bar where his girlfriend was working. She stopped by our table and spouted out general complaints about having to work. My friend hands her a straw. She just stares at him blankly. He says, suck it up. Huh, I've used this one before on a co-worker when I worked at the convenience store slash deli. She was complaining about some nonsense or another, and I seized the opportunity. The look on her face was priceless. I was just so casual about it, like I barely looked up from what I was doing when I handed it to her. I don't think she even realized I was listening. Our boss found it absolutely hilarious. Sitting around a fire, drinking, telling lies and whatnot, and a female friend asks, Out of ten, how would you rate yourself in bed? Quick as a flash, friend of mine says, 11. Come on, be serious, who am I going to tell? Hopefully, everyone. 11. I used to work in retail. Myself and the head of grocery had a call with a supplier where they were going to push really harsh trading terms with us in the short term because we were updating our contract to hold them more accountable for poor performance, delivery, etc. After the call, everyone was very busy discussing that we would just respond in kind later on. The head of grocery pipes up and says, Yeah, we're going to get screwed in the butt now, but at least they'll get crap on their wangs. When I was a high school teacher, our assistant principal was caught having an affair. She divorced her husband, but it was all over the news. A few weeks later, a kid hung a banner in the hallway that read, I can't cheat in school, but Mrs. Blank can cheat on her husband. Cool. Pretty good comeback from a 16-year-old. Must be a pretty small town for an affair to be on the news. Extremely small town. Tune in at 7 o'clock to see who hasn't cut their grass this week. There was a guy smarting off to the new guy dating his ex. So, what's it like inside a hoo-ha that's used material? The new guy? Oh, only the first two inches were used. The other six were plain sailing. My wife gets mean on vodka. Not like starting a fight mean, more like destroy all ego mean. Winding down a party, close to blackout drunk, and most of us can't even remember how the conversation ended up, with chubby friend insulting wife's lack of chest and implying she should go buy some boobs. Wife says, but those are expensive. Chubby friend cups his moobs and says, These did cost me quite a bit. The wife closes the night with, Just how much do you have to spend at Burger King to get a bosom like that? I have an issue learning spoken language, so when I started French, I was doing horribly despite how much I was working. During a parent-teacher conference, my French teacher told my parents that I was incapable of learning French. My dad leaned in and said, Madam, there are mentally impaired children in France who are capable of learning French. He's capable of learning, you're just incapable of teaching. I was tending bar at a place in Buffalo back in the 90s. 
Pretty girl at the bar lifts her glass to take a drink and accidentally spills some down the front of her shirt when she gets the lip of the cup to her mouth. The four to five people around her say nothing, and without missing a beat, she laughs and says, Huh, I must be full. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. Put the playlist on in the background to finish listening to all the stories, linked at the top of the description. And if you like Am I the Genius, give Am I the Jerk a shot, linked in the description too. Either way, thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.